it is a lot easier to get a job in the area where you go to school. Welcome to NBA Pod TV. I'm your host, Mia Saini. Today I'm excited to bring you special coverage of a Forte Foundation NBA alumni panel held here in Washington, D.C. Forte Forum events, which are organized by the Forte Foundation, provide opportunities for potential MBA students to learn about business schools and careers in business. Topics of the panel include what to consider when choosing a business school, when it's appropriate to pursue joint degrees, as well as the importance of utilizing your networks. The panelists are Erica Lubineski, an alumni of the Ross School of Business. She's chief of staff at a nonprofit called Women for Women International. Megan O'Neill is a recent graduate of Georgetown's McDonough School of Business. She's now program manager at AOL. Prior to business school, Megan worked at Google. Bridget Venn has an MBA and Master's of City and Regional Planning from Keenan Flagler Business School. She's a senior consultant at Deloitte. And last, Dana Shear is a Columbia Business School alumni and is a policy analyst with the Federal Communications Commission. Hi, good evening. My name is Catherine. Um, I am just beginning the process of choosing an institution, um, and it can be a little overwhelming. And I was wondering, in your opinion, what are the top two to three things that um, myself and the rest of us should be looking at in terms of choosing an institution? I would say people is absolutely hands down was number one for me. The best advice I was given is to go to those schools and meet with the people. Um, you have no idea if you're going to really mesh with the type of people at the different schools. Obviously, like every school has a pretty you know, broad array and a diverse uh, student body, but you really want to make sure that you feel like one of them and you, know, like you feel like you can learn with these people and you can learn from these people. Um, I think people are very, uh, very instrumental. Uh, I think my other top one would be location, and I say this uh, with a caveat because I'm from the West Coast, and I thought I always wanted to go back to the West Coast, and I went to Georgetown. Um, and I, I do think that it is, it is a lot easier, and I'm just going to, I'm very blunt about these questions, so I'm going to say the honest answer. It is a lot easier to get a job in the area where you go to school. And I'm not saying it's not possible to get a job where you don't go to school. I had a ton of interviews in San Francisco this past year, my second year, because I thought I wanted to go back there. So it could happen. I just had to be extremely diligent because you have to make sure that you have a network in those cities at the school where you're at. Um, so I, I think that location does matter. I think the, the top two things is what do you want and what do you think you're going to get out of the experience from the school. And really, I think that the, there's so much value to really thinking and inspecting and looking into your soul and your heart and seeing what you want out of the experience and being very, very clear about it. You may not have the crystal ball to say, 10 years from now, I'm going to be X, but you know what skills you want to build. You know the type of person you are. You know the environment in which you thrive. And really look at that and look at the environment that you offer, visit the schools, look around, and then move forward from that. And I do have to add, I, I'm, I went to Michigan and I, uh, I will actually disagree with the fact of location because there's plenty of business schools that have very large programs that have lots and lots of alumni all over the world. So. Don't, I know there's a lot of people, especially I've seen in D.C. here, that want to stay in the area because they want to work in the area. Look around and expand your horizons and talk with people and figure out where you want to go from there. Hi, my name's Mary. Um, I had a question. There's a lot of talk of networking here. I was just wondering how much you attribute your success to your school's network versus a learned skill set that you learned there that you would not have otherwise. I would say it was probably about 50-50. Um, my school has a very good relationship with my company and they tend to come on campus a lot and they do a lot, a fair amount of their interview slots there. So I was able to get into that interview with those, with this particular company and I, I think the school somewhat contributed to that. However, I know once I got in that door, that was being able to excel at that interview and being able to show them that I belonged at this company with both intellectually and sort of culturally, that was both me and the things that I learned while I was in school. 
example, I got my position now at AOL. I didn't go back to Google. I, I'm a trader, and I went over to AOL. It's here in Dulles, uh, outside of uh, DC in Dulles. But um, my, I took a, a, took a couple marketing classes at Georgetown, and was a really good professor, a really good marketing professor there. And he had a, a Georgetown alum working at AOL that asked him to give him some names. Um, of people that might be good for this position, and he gave he gave the guy one name, <laughs> um, and I think obviously that's because I had you know advertising experience um, at Google, and so I got the position one because a Georgetown alum came back to a professor, and and the professor reached out to me. Getting your MBA is one. I don't think prior to, to MBA, I realized the importance of your network and realized that you really at every opportunity should try to build that up. But um, being at, at, at business school, I, I, I just really, you know, pushed on you that, oh, excuse me, that, that it's so important and you never know what's going to happen. You know, if you pay attention once in one of your classes, <laughs> your professor remembers you and, and you, get, you get hooked up with a great position. Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm wondering how much I should consider brand equity uh, as part of my decision making process. Again, I guess it just depends on what it is that you want to do. Um, when I was at the FCC, I noticed that the MBAs really seemed to only come from very few schools, and somehow I got in my head that, well, I want to go to one of those schools too, and I, without really thinking about what it meant in other um, fields. So I think it, it just kind of depends on what field you're going into. You know, and we're not supposed to like pump up our schools either, so <laughs> trying to be cautious. But I, I, again, it's just, it's just everything else. I think it depends. I, it, it does help. I mean, the fact that I'm going to a went to a school that had a, not only a good reputation for its business school, but also its law school and some of the other schools that not, just um, helps me network, not just with people who went to the business school, but to other aspects of the university as well. Hi, my name is Hillary Critchley, and I'm wondering about, especially in this economy where maybe, Megan, you graduated most recently, um, there seems to be this trend of doing joint programs or I, I have a specific interest in healthcare, so it's like a master's in public policy or you know, public health or even like a PhD in health economics, et cetera. So just wondering about like your competitiveness when um, applying for certain positions and if any of you have insight into that world, what that looks like and what you think about the value and trade-off of maybe specializing more than doing like a, a broader management degree. One, if the interest level is there for you to do a joint degree, um, it only helps you. Uh, absolutely, it only helps you. I have a bunch of friends that did MSFS, which is Masters in Foreign Service, and uh, their MBA at Georgetown, um, and like public policy and and their MBA, JD MBA, that type of stuff, MD MBA. Um, I mean, their li their lives are different than the people that are they're in the full time. You know, you go a year to to get your MBA, and then you take a year and you do your MSFS or public policy, and then you go back to do your MBA. So you're like not in the same classes as the people you knew. That's kind of how that happens, and that's not how it happens everywhere, but that's how it happened at my school. Um, but I think absolutely, if you are interested in both things, I think it would extremely help you, and you'll be way more competitive in the workforce because you just have that much more um, experience. I would say there would be two ways that it would really benefit you. If there is something very specific that you think you want to do that's at the intersection of two, those two degrees, you're of course more qualified than many other candidates. But the other piece I would say that may be more long term is because you're at the school longer, you actually build up a greater network. Uh, I came in and did my business degree first so I sort of considered myself part of the class of 2007, even though I didn't graduate till 2008. And so now I have 300 other people in the workplace that are about a year ahead of me that I can bounce things off of or just a giant part of my network. I have people that just graduated that I can talk with about those sorts of things and of course the class I graduated with. So I think there's, there's a benefit to that too. Uh, the only thing I would say is sometimes it does make you a little bit specialized. I know when I was trying to talk to people about uh, going into consulting, they were, well, but you have this planning degree. I was, well, well, there's two reasons. One, I may want to do consulting for cities in the future. And two, candidly, I need another year to figure things out at the time. So that was another benefit to me, which hopefully you'll 
you will not need to use, but. I won't speak specifically to that, but just general advice is that don't take anybody else's word for it. Like, talk to the people that are doing what you want to do, because they may have totally different advice than we do. So that's, that's one of the lessons I kind of learned the hard way. Was, I thought that one person, like, had the answer and that, I, you know, for everything. And um, some people may want you to think that. Um, <laughs> and they may sell books about that. But um, I think the best just course of action is generally is to try to figure out if, to the extent that you can, what you want to do and talk to people actually doing it and get their advice. Well, I just want to thank our panelists for sharing a wealth of knowledge and uh, their honesty with regards to all these questions that were asked. So join me in. Well, that's it for this edition of MBA Pod TV. I'm your host, Mia Saini. Visit us at mbapodcaster.com to download the latest audio and video shows. And of course, join us on Facebook and Twitter to get the latest news and insight into your MBA application process. Mm -hmm.